What is going on guys, Chris here, and welcome to the third and final part of Can Chris Solve the Terraminx. Uh, we're up to the last stages now, we have just three edges left to solve, and then we'll be able to go ahead and solve the puzzle like a normal Megaminx. So, let's just go ahead and get started. If you've missed either of the first two parts, I'll have links in the description so you can go and check them out and get up to speed. Now what we want to do with the last three edges is we have to be quite clever about it. We can't solve these edges as we would on a higher order n by n by n puzzle simply because uh, there's more than four faces being affected by a single edge. As you can see we have one, two, three, four, five here, then another five here. So there's ten centers all connected uh, through a slice to just one edge here. So we can't just do a simple parity algorithm, that isn't really going to work. Uh, so I'll demonstrate what I mean by having to be kind of clever here. I guess we have this little pair here, which is um, orange and grey, and they can match up here with this orange and grey. And then what we want to do is we want to be quite clever by... Um, let me see, when we, when we kind of move this out of the way and replace it with this, we want to make sure we start to solve... Um, this edge over here. So we have white and yellow here uh, and what we want to do is essentially put pieces here that when we slice back are going to solve part of the edge. Now I can see that we're kind of unlucky here because we can't do that. Uh, neither of these pieces in the broken edge are going to fit here. So what we're going to do in this case is just a simple um, algorithm uh, just like on a 4x4 and that's just going to flip this one edge and when we slice back uh, we just want to make sure everything's good, yeah everything's solved uh, so that's fine, that's all well and good um, now that's just one case where we couldn't do anything uh, but I'll show you on this edge what we can do so what I'm going to do is slice this pair here with uh, this white and yellow middle piece uh, and then we want to set up this piece, this edge here, so that when we slice back we're going to solve part of the orange and grey. So, let me see, if I if I put in okay, so yeah, we can put in this grey and orange here in such a way that when we slice back as you can see we've managed to pair this up here. So it's just a, a clever little way of of building everything properly so that we we can kind of reduce the number of moves we have to do to solve the three pieces so I'll give you another example here uh, let me see so this is a nice and easy one so what I can do here is I can uh, slice this yellow and white across and what I can do here is put in the grey and orange that's left so that when I slice back, it solves this piece here. So, so that's neat. The only issue now is that I only have two edges left. Um, now I suppose what we could do is the 4x4 algorithm, but that's going to give us parity. Um, and I can see this because this piece here is going to have to go down here to displace this piece when you bring it back they'll be flipped incorrectly and as far as I'm aware there's no algorithm for flipping these and solving the parity issue uh, so we're going to have to break up this in order to fix it which is kind of unfortunate but it's just the way that it goes um, so let me have a look here okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slice this green and purple across and then I'm going to have to put in my grey and orange and break that up when I slice back but that's not too much of an issue because looking ahead I should be able to solve the puzzle this move um, so let me show you exactly what I mean by that uh, so I'm going to put this piece in like that okay and then I'm going to slice across and I'm going to solve the white and uh, sorry white and yellow and then I'm going to foresee that this grey and orange is going to slice back this way so I'm going to put in the grey and orange edge and then as you can see when we slice this back the purple and green is going to slice back this way and land where it needs to be with the rest of the edge 
and as you can see we've managed to solve the last three edges. Now that was kind of complicated and probably not the best way for me to explain that but um, hopefully you guys get the picture. You essentially have to keep three edges at your disposal at all times just so you are able to, to move pieces around and kind of get around parity without having to do any algorithms. Um, so yeah, that's edge pairing done. Now it's just a simple Megaminx solve. Um, and as you guys know already, I've already done a Cancris solve on it. I can solve the Megaminx no problem, but I'm just gonna speed through this anyway um, and just, just finish it off for the camera. Uh, so let's just get this done. So we've got our cross here. And now I'm just going to build the rest of the edges. Okay, so just one more F to L piece to do, and that's over here. Like that, nice and easy. So now we've built essentially the first part of the puzzle, um, and it's starting to look really good. Um, I love the solved look of this puzzle. So uh, I guess we're just going to carry on building now. I'm going to put in this little trio of pieces here. We already have a nice uh, pair here, so that's all good. That'll slot in nicely. It's actually a really good Megaminx solve. So we need the green and blue, which is up here. There you go. Okay, so closer and closer we are getting um almost done with the second part of it just this last bit to go um and then we'll be on the last layer basically so let's insert this last set of pairs here all right so now we just do f2l again um at the top so this is anything that's not gray now Sorry if I seem in a rush, I'm just really eager to finish this puzzle now because as you can imagine it's been going on quite a while. So second pair in, um, the green, that goes in there, red, yellow and pink, done. Okay, last, last pair and that's going in here, alright, <laughs> wow, okay last layer, let's do this. Hopefully I'll be able to do this without any real issues. Okay, there we go. That was confusing, but okay. Okay, so it's... Um, how can I forget how to do this? So it's one. So that's one done. Oh, this is just a really awkward case of them all not being very cooperative. <laughs> so let's finish off this corner, then the last corner here, we're so close now, oh okay, I think we're just one algorithm away, so let's, let's do that, it's just the corners now, okay, here we go, last little bit, let's get this done, okay, Bang, there we go. Wow, so in celebration of me solving the Terraminx, a bus, a garbage truck, and a plane just went by my flat. So sorry if you had any background noise there, but as you can see, we've managed to solve the Terraminx finally. Um, wow, that was, um, that was long. It actually didn't feel as long as I remember it being when I first solved a Terraminx. I think that's just because I have more experience with lots of different puzzles now. Um, but it's definitely a long puzzle. I think it would have taken maybe two hours total time, um, including the time off camera. So yeah, it's definitely a big puzzle, but it's not actually that difficult. I'm sure you, you realized as I was solving it, it doesn't take that much thought, it's just kind of monotonous and it takes a while, but it's a very, very awesome puzzle and I'm super excited that I managed to solve it. And I'm really glad I managed to do it on Canker Solve, finally. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and if you've watched the whole series, thank you again for your support. Um, I really love making videos and I'm super excited to see what we can do in 2020. 
But that's it from me guys. Remember, leave a like if you've enjoyed this video, leave a comment and leave your suggestions for Canker Solve videos in the future. And then of course subscribe and you'll be notified whenever I make a new video. That's it from me though guys, have a great day and I'll see you next time.